Protecting employees and the environment are two important considerations in your company's overall safety program. To help you meet these challenges, this program will review information about chemicals and hazardous materials that will be of value in meeting these goals. It's called hazard communications, but it's really information you need to know to protect yourselves from potential hazards associated with the use, handling, storing, and disposing of chemicals and hazardous materials. The first step in hazard communications is a written plan that outlines proper procedures, safety and health issues related to chemicals and hazardous materials. The written plan outlines safety steps and procedures, training information, chemical inventory, labeling procedures, and other information your company considers important when using, handling, storing, and disposing of hazardous materials. The written plan is your guide to safety and health, as well as making sure all the regulatory standards of hazard communications are achieved. The written plan also identifies the person or persons who are responsible for chemical inventory, the written procedures, and coordinating the HAZCOM program in your organization, as well as properly maintaining all MSDSs, or material safety data sheets. We'll discuss material safety data sheets in just a few minutes, but for now, let's take a basic look at hazardous materials and how they can affect your safety and health. We can't possibly cover the many thousands of chemicals and hazardous materials in this short program, so let's concentrate on the basics. First of all, everyone is involved in handling chemicals and hazardous materials. You and your family use them every day at home. Pesticides, cleaning supplies, soaps, detergents, batteries, insect killers, antifreeze in your car, and many others. Just because you use chemicals at work, don't think safety ends when you leave work. Everyone comes in contact with hazardous materials and chemicals every day, whether it's at home or at work. A hazardous material or chemical is any material that poses a physical or health hazard. Physical hazards include compressed gases, explosive or flammable liquid, organic peroxides, oxidizers, and pyrophoric chemicals. Health hazards include those chemicals creating acute or chronic health effects. Basically, anything that can damage your eyes, lungs, skin, or mucous membranes. All this tells you is practically every chemical at home or work has a potential physical or health hazard. Each chemical is different, with varying degrees of hazards. That's why it's critical to read and follow the instructions and warning labels on all chemicals. Gasoline is a physical and health hazard, and it's used safely by millions of people. To avoid the risks... Simply follow the safety and health procedures for that particular chemical and the hazards are reduced. In some cases, personal protective equipment is used to reduce the hazards of a particular chemical. You already have a basic understanding of chemicals and how they can affect your health if used improperly, but it makes sense to be aware of the hazard. Then, take the necessary steps to protect yourself from that hazard. Part of the hazard communication requirements of OSHA are labeling requirements. Quite naturally, we see labels on the foods we buy and a wide variety of other products. Labels are designed to provide information of the contents of the material and also what specific physical and health hazards there may be of these materials. The manufacturer, importer, or distributor is responsible for labeling containers, but the employer must adhere to the following. Ensure that all containers of hazardous substances in the workplace are labeled, tagged, or marked and include the identity of the hazardous chemical and the appropriate hazard warnings. Container labels for purchased chemicals must also include the name and address of the chemical manufacturer, importer, or other responsible party. Check all incoming shipments of hazardous chemicals to be sure that they are labeled. If a container is not labeled, obtain a label or the label information from the manufacturer, importer, or other responsible party, or prepare a label using information obtained from these sources. Employers are responsible for ensuring that containers in the workplace are labeled, tagged, or marked. Manufacturers of labels can provide a wide range of labels to meet your specific needs. Do not deface or remove existing labels on containers unless the container is immediately marked with the required information. Basically, every chemical must be identified and labeled, regardless of the size of the chemical container. Employees must be trained on the importance of labeling portable receptacles into which they've poured hazardous substances. 
If the portable container is for their immediate use, then the container does not have to be labeled. But keep in mind the words immediate use. If these chemicals are not for immediate use, they must be labeled. Each label will have three important pieces of information you should be familiar with. One, the identity of the substance. What is the chemical and what is it supposed to do? Two, directions for recommended use, handling, and storage. Three, hazard warnings. These hazard warnings come in many forms, such as flammable, combustible, toxic, corrosive, cancer-causing agents, biohazard, and others. You need to know what the hazard is so you may take the action to reduce exposure to hazardous materials. What about those consumer products that are used for cleaning? Normally, all cleaning supplies are properly labeled by the manufacturer. They provide directions for use, storage and disposal, plus they identify the manufacturer and also explain precautions to take when using these chemicals. The most important rule about these chemicals is to read, understand, and follow the instructions printed on the label. That's a good rule for all chemicals and hazardous materials. Two of the more commonly labeled materials in the workplace will be flammables and combustibles. But what's the difference between the two materials? Flammable means the chemical, such as gasoline, has a low flash point and can be ignited quite easily. Combustible means that the chemical, such as diesel fuel, can be ignited, but at a higher flash point. Don't worry about the definitions of flash point, but flammables can be ignited more easily than combustibles. Flammable and combustible liquids and their vapors may create health hazards from both skin contact and inhalation of toxic vapors. Irritation results from the solvent action of many flammable liquids on the body's natural skin oils and tissue. A toxic hazard of varying degrees exists in practically all cases, depending on the concentration of the vapor. Labels are extremely important because they warn of potential hazards. We need to read, understand, and follow the instructions printed on labels to protect ourselves from these potential hazards. A good, accurate, and up-to-date labeling system of all chemicals in the workplace will go a long way in preventing exposures to potential hazards. But on the other hand, a labeling system won't do any good if you ignore or fail to follow the proper procedures. If you see a label that you don't understand, or you're not sure exactly what the label says, ask your supervisor. There's no reason to take chances. There are thousands and thousands of chemicals, with more thousands added each year. Even chemists and chemical engineers don't know all the chemicals or the potential hazards of all chemicals. Just like you, they read material safety data sheets, labels, and other information to keep informed. You need to keep informed and make sure all chemicals are properly identified and labeled. Can you be sure the chemical container you used yesterday will have the same chemical in it today? You won't know unless the container is properly labeled. Take labeling seriously, and that means following the directions printed on the label. It's just good business, and after all, safety and health is an important issue. MSDS, or Material Safety Data Sheets, are provided by the manufacturer for all hazardous chemicals used in your facility. These MSDSs are for your use in the event you want more information on the chemicals you're using in the workplace. Generally, material safety data sheets are maintained in an office or other designated areas, so if you need more information, ask your supervisor. Manufacturers have their own forms, and all forms are not identical, but all MSDSs will have the required information on the form regardless of the manufacturer. What information is available on MSDSs? Generally, the information is much more technical than is normally provided on labels. It will identify the chemical as used on the label and will also include the chemical and common names of the substance in a single substance product. In tested mixtures, the ingredients that contribute to the mixture or known hazards of the substance. In vested mixtures, all health hazards will be listed plus any physical hazards. The MSDS will contain physical and chemical characteristics in addition to any physical and health hazards. It will show the primary routes of entry into your body or bloodstream. This information is used to determine the type of engineering controls or personal protective equipment to use. The material safety data sheet will list any permissible exposure limits. 
Permissible exposure limits defines what exposures are harmful and which require protection. It will list whether the chemical is a potential carcinogen or not. It will outline precautions for safe handling and spill or leak cleanup. It will also list control measures such as devices, practices, or personal protective equipment. Emergency first aid procedures will be listed on the MSDS. It will also list the date and preparation of and the identification and phone number of the manufacturer or responsible party. Let's take a quick look at a completed MSDS and see what information is provided on the form. We've selected unleaded regular gasoline, which is the trade name of the chemical. The MSDS lists the manufacturer's name, emergency telephone number, and address. The chemical name is automotive lead-free gasoline. This product is classified as hazardous. The warning statement reads, danger, extremely flammable, harmful or fatal if swallowed, and may be harmful if inhaled, may cause irritation, and may be harmful if absorbed through the skin. The occupational control procedures specify protective equipment, such as chemical type goggles or face shield optional for eyes. Protective clothing, such as uniforms, coveralls, or lab coats, should be worn for skin protection. Launder or dry clean when soiled. Gloves resistant to chemicals and petroleum distillates required. SBA or supplied air respirator protection required for entry into tanks, vessels, or other confined spaces containing gasoline. This equipment protects from inhalation of the harmful vapors and fumes. Ventilation must be adequate to meet permissible concentrations. The permissible concentrations are listed next in technical terms that explains the time-weighted average for gasoline, which is 300 parts per million. The manufacturer, however, recommends 100 parts per million. The MSDS also lists emergency and first aid procedures, such as if the chemical is exposed to the eyes, flush with water for 15 minutes. Wash exposed areas of the skin with soap and water. If the chemical is ingested, do not induce vomiting. May cause chemical pneumonitis. Call a physician. There are other recommended procedures. Some of the physiological effects of exposure include slight to moderate eye irritation. In the respiratory system, the chemical may cause dizziness, irritation of eyes, nose, and throat, vomiting, bluish color of the skin, and other effects. The next section outlines specific technical information that would be of value to industrial hygienists and other technical engineers. The next section provides fire protection information such as flashpoint, flammable limits, and recommended fire extinguishing agents and special procedures. The other sections of the MSDS provide environmental protection, precautions, chemical and physical properties of the chemical, and other information that is valuable knowledge for the protection from the hazards of this chemical. Again, the most important thing to remember is that material safety data sheets are designed to provide information for the protection from potential health and physical hazards. Much of the information is technical in nature, but all employees have the right to this information. If you're working with a chemical or hazardous material and want more information, ask your supervisor. MSDSs are available to anyone asking for the information. As in any operation, if you have a question about the materials you're working with, or you're not sure how to safely handle, use, store, and dispose of these materials, ask questions. Knowledge truly is power, especially when it comes to your safety and health. As you can see, there's quite a bit to hazard communications, labeling, material safety data sheets, and making sure you're aware of potential hazards. Then take the steps necessary to prevent exposure to both physical and health hazards, proper personal protective equipment, following company policies and procedures, and in general, using your experience and good judgment to prevent accidents and illnesses. Under OSHA's new HAZCOM standard, employers are responsible for maintaining MSDSs on multi-employer worksites to provide other employers access to the MSDS for each chemical used on that worksite. This makes sure all employees have access to the information contained on MSDS for everyone's protection. If you use contractors in your facility, make sure the contractor's employees are properly trained and have access to the MSDS while at your work site. Don't forget additional training that goes beyond hazard communications, such as confined space entry, because when you work in these areas, there is additional safety precautions to use to avoid physical and health hazards. 
Quite often, when you're working in confined spaces, there are a number of chemical hazard exposures, such as welding, toxic fumes, gases, and others. Hazard communications is an important part of your overall safety and health program. Before we wrap this up, keep in mind that all chemicals can be potentially harmful. Under the OSHA HAZCOM standard, chemicals used in the workplace that can be purchased from local retail stores, such as cleaning supplies, detergents, and similar chemicals, do not require a material safety data sheet. However, these chemicals must be properly labeled by the manufacturer, and everyone should read and follow the instructions and warnings printed on these chemicals. These chemicals can be hazardous if not handled, used, stored, and disposed of properly. Thank you for listening and watching, and we ask that you follow your company's policies and procedures when working with chemicals and hazardous materials. If you want to learn more about the chemicals with which you work, ask your supervisor for a material safety data sheet on those particular chemicals. Read and follow the directions on all labels, and of course, wear proper personal protective equipment when it's required. Use your experience, good judgment, and take the time for safety. It's worth it. Thank you.